me. I have another book haul. At this point, I think it's appropriate to picture me like Scrooge McDuck just swimming through the pages. The only problem is Scrooge McDuck doesn't have to worry about where he puts them after he swims through them. We could have a problem. Welcome. You know, when I was thinking about the introduction of this video and the title for it, I was all, it could be my secret shame. Books just keep finding me. Could I make a house out of all of these books? Oh no, I did a thing. And then I had a freaking word with myself because do you know what? I have had a horrible week. The worst week ever. Packaging supplies that I had been waiting for for literally a fortnight turned up damaged and everybody is stressed and you know what I have some of the best customers in the world but there have been a few angry people this week and I'm over it. I'm over things being out of my control but you know what's in my control? Showing you pretty books. I can show you guys pretty books and I can choose to feel better. That is what I am choosing. Today we are choosing bookish joy. So come along with me because I also have a small confession to make. But first I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, Web Novel. Web Novel is a global online reading platform which is kind of like a massive library which has over 200 thousand novels and graphic novels for you to read for free. And the great thing is that you don't have to wait a year for your favourite author to bring out a new book for you to read because everything on web novel is serialised. Meaning you can just come back the next week to get another chapter of the book that you're obsessed with. With so many things to choose on web novel I love the fact that they have a tag system meaning that you can filter by romance, you can filter by comedy or adventure and find exactly what it is that you would like to read. Right now one of the most popular books on web novel is My Vampire System. This is one of those genre defying novels that has its finger in a lot of different pies. So if you like magic, if you like science fiction and if you like paranormal this is the place to go. It also kind of gives me video game vibes which I'm very here for. In this one we follow Quinn. He lives in a world which has been under siege by an alien race for many many years. Because of this everybody in this world regardless of their skill set is required to do two years of military training and Quinn is not looking forward to it. He has lost everything to the war, his home, his family and he's so withdrawn that he's bullied every day at school. He honestly wonders what is the point. Then one day in the middle of a science experiment Quinn cuts his finger and happens to bleed on an old book that his parents left behind. This book responds to Quinn's blood and it opens up at a very particular page. Quinn finds himself accidentally having been granted to the blueprints to a whole new set of skills that he never imagined for himself. He discovers how to become a vampire. He realises that these powers are dangerous but they have also granted him the ability to have a new life. Quinn is desperate to keep his friends safe from these new abilities but the growing hunger is insatiable and then one day Layla gets in the way. I'm super excited that I get to not only talk into this one but the author's previous book and all of the other books waiting for me on Web Novel. So go guys, explore. With over 110,000 authors on the platform you are guaranteed to find something for you. You guys know I talk about it in almost every video that I am on a six month book buying ban. This ban is not to stop books from coming into my house clearly. It was simply to make sure that I did not go bankrupt. My finances needed a small break from my serotonin fueled purchases. As in the search for serotonin, not you know that I'm producing too much or something. Please if you have any to spare I will take it. And the reason I tell you guys about my book buying ban in like every single video is to keep myself accountable for it and I have been doing well until last month when I did a thing. In April I read The Bone Season. It got all the stars from me. It became a new most beloved book. I am so, so glad that I read it and I loved it so much that I purchased the hardback edition. However, the covers for this series are all over the place. Midway through publishing the hardbacks for this, they switched to these white covers, which is what you can get the paperbacks in, and the original hardcovers are like gold dust. So when the mime order popped up on Book Depository not that long ago, I also snapped that up and I am waiting for that to arrive. So this is when I do the lean of shame and admit that that mostly bare shelf over there is going to be my Samantha Shannon shelf. Your girl is obsessed. Oh I should have thought better about these stacks. The next tiny slip up that I had was 
from Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armantrout. There's an ongoing almost meme at this point that all of these books, literally every book that I have purchased on my book buying ban was the fault of Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction. She gifted me the bone season and she just couldn't keep a straight face when she was reading this through a live show and like amazing things were happening and I bought it pretty much immediately. Ashley's recommendations have clearly been really working for me recently so I am hoping that this one adds to that tally list. This is I believe kind of grim dark fantasy romance and I don't know anything else about it and to be perfectly honest I don't want to. I know it's about a world which is perpetually at war against evil forces, I know that Poppy is like the chosen one and her ascension is the thing that is supposedly going to bring about peace finally and I also know that Poppy would rather just hang out with the guards and kill the things that killed her parents. Which, fair. But that's all I know about it and I'm gonna keep it that way. Don't worry, there will be a punishment for having broken my book buying ban, albeit only by a handful of books. My patrons are cooking it up right now, it's gonna be a doozy. Speaking of Ashley, she is unhauling some of the books that she had loved but didn't want to hold on to and she passed them on to me. The first one that I have is Bone Crier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. This is the beautiful fairy loot edition with sprayed and sparkly edges. It also has this gorgeousness under the dust jacket as most fairy loot books do. This is YA fantasy and it is about Elise and Bastian. Elise has long known that she was destined to be the matriarch of the bone criers. In this world the bone criers are the only people who stand between the living and the dead eating the living. Not a great deal really is it? They do this by ferrying their souls either to a heaven or an underworld but in order to be eligible to do this they have to make a sacrifice to the gods and in this case for Elise it is sacrificing the person that she is destined to love. I say destined because she does not yet love him which is just convenient really because Bastian's father was killed by a bone crier and he has never ever given up his quest for revenge. Elise's ritual begins and she and Bastian are pulled together whether they like it or not and I strongly suspect that the answer is not. The next one is Master of One by Jada Jones and Danny Bennett and again the beautiful sprayed edges and the stunning art under the cover. This one is about Rags who is a down on his luck thief who is struggling to survive in the queendom in which he lives. One day Rags is on a job and it goes very wrong, very very wrong and he gets picked up and taken to the palace where he expects to be executed but instead he is handed to the head sorcerer or wizard or magic -y type person. They tell him that he can live but only if he steals for them the six pieces of an ancient relic that they are desperate to get their hands on. But the problem is that those six pieces of this ancient relic are actually people and once Rags steals them and bands them together, six slightly motley ruffians are kind of all that stands between, you know, destruction and not. There are a lot of not good deals for people in this haul, I suspect. Ashley also passed along her arc of Malice by Heather Walter. You guys know that I am a little bit of a sucker for the Cinderella retelling, but what you might not know is that I am also a bit of a sucker for the Sleeping Beauty retelling, and that is what this one is with a significant twist. So many many years ago some dark fairies cursed a line of princesses. They were cursed to die. Deeply unfortunate. Now we're all the way down the line to Princess Aurora who has to find true love's kiss but she can't stand to kiss any more princes because princes are the last thing that she wants in her life and she is disintegrating. Her mental health is not coping very well with this and the narrator of this book really wants to help her but the narrator is the villain. She is a dark fairy who has become quite obsessed with Princess Aurora. I was about to say that is probably not the best synopsis of this but I think more than anything that synopsis just highlights my interests. That synopsis was kind of just like here's what I like, enjoy! And I hope I shall despite the fact that there have been some mixed reviews for this one. And finally Ashley passed along Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. I have wanted this for such a long time but for some reason I just keep forgetting to pick it up. The synopsis for 
this is so powerful that I'm just going to read it to you because I could not do it better justice. Mary B. Addison killed a baby. Allegedly. She didn't say much in that first interview with detectives and the media filled in only blanks that mattered. A white baby had died under the care of a church-going black woman and her nine-year-old daughter. The public convicted Mary and the jury made it official. But did she do it? She wouldn't say. Mary survived six years in baby jail before being dumped in a group home. There wasn't a point to setting the record straight before, but now she's got Ted and their unborn child. Think about it. When the state threatens to take her baby, Mary's fate now lies in the hands of the one person she distrusts the most, her mama. No one knows the real mama, but does anyone know the real Mary? This one was an absolute runaway success on booktube when it was released and I am looking so forward to finally finding out what all of the hype was about. And the next one that I have got is a gift from one of my lovely patrons Mel at Crazy for Books and Coffee. She sent me the sanatorium and some chocolate, but the chocolate is gone. The note did say that it was to help me get through my TBR and it definitely did but the half an hour that it took lovely wife Helen and I to finish it. I am not sure whether it is a straight up thriller or whether it is a thriller -y detective novel. It may be the start of a series because the main character here is a detective who is taking time off from work. That is technically how the Dry series by Jane Harper starts. The detective in it is away from work. So I have high hopes for this one because that format really worked for me. And before I go any further and tell you the synopsis, can we just look at the sprayed edges on this? This one gives me massive gothic vibes and I am so hoping that it lives up to them. So it is about Ellen. She has received an invitation completely out of the blue to celebrate her brother's engagement. In order to do that, which she doesn't want to do in the first place, she has to travel to this hotel in the Swiss Alps. The hotel itself has just been newly converted out of an old sanatorium and it gives Ellen some really nasty feelings when she turns up. But the morning after the very first night that she spends there, her brother's fiancé goes missing, completely out of the blue without any signs of a struggle. Then the tagline says, but no one has realised yet that another woman has gone missing and she's the only one who could have warned them how much danger they're in. Now next up I have one that I talked about in my most anticipated for the rest of the year video. I am so excited for this. It is Dial A for Aunties. I feel like it's really going with my vibe. I should have put on red lipstick then we would have been matchy matchy. This one is about Medi Chan and she is on a blind date that was set up by her meddling aunties who just want to see her happy. The problem is that while she's on this blind date she accidentally kills the guy. And the thing that Mehdi is worried the most about after this is not so much that the guy is dead but more that the guy is dead on the eve of the biggest event for her family of the year. Her family are wedding planners and it is the biggest wedding of the year and this could screw all of it up. So she gets in touch with her meddling aunties because they put her in this position in the first place and they all between them decide to hide the body in the venue. But the venue is being managed by Mehdi's ex who absolutely and completely knows when she's up to something. If this is as laugh out loud funny as all of the quotes on the back say, I am going to be a very cheerful girl at the end of it. Speaking of murder, I have The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. I've been humming and hawing about this one for a little while. I really, really loved One of Us is Lying, but I was really not a fan of the next one. Who can keep a secret, I think? And so I never bothered to pick up One of Us is Next, which is the sequel to One of Us is Lying. I want to try it because I loved the first book, but I'm scared. This one has a kind of convoluted premise so it says the story family are the envy of their neighbors can i just say that i love the fact that they're called the stories I just, mm. simple pleasures until it all falls apart the four children are suddenly dropped by their mother with a single sentence you know what you did they never hear from her again Years later, when cousins Aubrey, Millie and Jonah Story receive a mysterious invitation to spend the summer at their grandmother's resort, they have no choice but to follow their curiosity and meet the woman who's been such an enigma their entire lives. 
The teenagers are determined to discover the truth but some secrets are better left alone. I loved the way that Karen M. McManus managed the cast in One of Us Was Lying. It was really balanced but everybody's point of view left you on a little bit of a cliffhanger to somebody else's and everybody knew a little thing, just a little piece and that slotted into the next piece that you were given and it was just masterful. It was great. I loved it. So I'm hoping that this is a return to form and I can just pretend that this one, whatever it was called to keep a secret thing, just didn't exist. I can just pretend that this was just, it was a blip and we'll just get back to the good stuff now. Next up I have two books that I am just, I'm so, so excited for. Everybody is talking about them right now. Nobody has a single bad word to say about them and maybe I'm being reformed about this hype train thing. Maybe I'm like, I'm jogging along beside the hype train now instead of being run over by it and hiding. I have Get Alive Chloe Brown and Take a Hint Danny Brown by Talia Hibbert. This one arrived from my wish list with no note attached so if it was you who sent it along please let me know so that I can thank you properly and this one came from my wonderful Victoria over at What Victoria Read. You guys know that she's one of my bestest friends ever. I love her to pieces and I think her content's great so you should go and check her out. These two are the first two books in the trilogy I believe about the Brown sisters. First up we have Chloe and I love the description of her on the back. It says that she is a chronically ill computer geek with a goal, a plan and a list and really that is so relatable. Change computer geek and put in book geek and it's me. I mean I never actually finish any of my lists but I write them. The problem is at the beginning of this novel, Chloe almost dies and it's not almost dying in the way that she has always anticipated almost dying and so it does not amuse her very much and she decides that she needs to get the most out of life right now. She writes a list for all of the things that she wants to do, all of the really bad things that she wants to do and then she finds herself a teacher. Redford Morgan is a tattooed biker with nary a care in the world and she has decided that he's going to show her how to be bad except she's still not very bad and he is and he's also apparently very dreamy and then things happen. Not sad about it. The second one is a fake dating book which I absolutely love. It's one of my favourite romance tropes ever. I've said before but I absolutely love it in romance novels when we follow one family or one group of friends. It's my favourite thing. I love getting little glimpses of past characters and present books. More of this please thank you. But of course the part that I think everybody is waiting for. If you saw my Instagram recently you will have spotted that I am holding some very special fairy loot editions of one of my favourite fantasy series ever. That is of course the Graceling series by Kristen Kishore. This is really really classic YA fantasy. This was literally one of the first YA fantasy series that I ever ever read and I just adore it so much. So when I saw that Fairy Loot had these exclusive Graceling editions coming out with all new covers and stunning sprayed edges I could not resist. But I placed the order for these months ago so you ain't punishing me for these ones. <laughs> so we have Graceline, Fire, Bitter Blue and the most recent release Winter Keep which I have not read yet. They are so so pretty but also very heavy so I'm gonna put them down now. This series is about Katza. She lives in a world where in powers are bestowed on a select few people and they are known as the Graces. But Katza has the grace of killing. She is an extraordinary fighter. She is gifted in making people die quickly and not necessarily comfortably. Because of this grace, Katza's former friends want nothing to do with her and she's completely shunned by the court. She is on her own with only her missions and she's determined that she's not doing it anymore. She's had enough. She's done. But just as she decides this, she uncovers a plot to kidnap a seemingly insignificant old man and during the investigation of this plot she encounters somebody with a grace 
that truly rivals her own. If you've also been hanging about my Instagram recently, you will also know that I am planning a Graceling along. I am going to be co-hosting a readathon for this one. I will let you guys know all of the details for that in a future video, so keep your eyes peeled. Next up, I have a few books from the wonderful people at Book Break, starting with The Ophelia Girls. Isn't this cover beautiful? This is by the same author of The Animals at Lockwood Manor, which is delightfully queer and creepy and mysterious and gothic and yes I recommend this one. When they offered to send this one along I was like yes thank you chat I shall have that. This book looks like it's told in like a sliding through time way so half of the time we're in the summer of 1973 and half of the time we're in the summer of 1997. So in 1973 Ruth and her friends are hanging out on the banks of a river around her family's grand estate. The next part gives me dark academia vibes because it says that they are all pretty obsessed with pre-Raphaelite paintings, specifically the drowning of Ophelia. One day they decide to start reenacting some of these paintings leading up to reenacting the drowning of Ophelia. And funnily enough, something goes wrong. Hands up, who was not surprised? Now it's the summer of 1997, Ruth has completely lost touch with all of the friends that she had at the time. She has moved on with her life, she's married, she has children now, and she is bringing her teenage daughter and the rest of her family back to her family's old estate because she hopes that the summer air in the countryside will make them feel better. But while they are staying at the old estate, a friend of Ruth's from that time just wanders back into her life and dredges up a lot of things that they had tried to keep hidden up until now. Next up, they also sent me Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Boy. You guys probably remember that a couple of months ago I mentioned Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man by Emmanuel Ako, which is kind of his manifesto of undoing racism. He says at the very beginning of that book that you cannot undo a problem that you do not know that you have. And so every chapter of this book is set up around a question that a white person might want to ask a black person about race but is often afraid to or realistically in some cases could probably do their own research into but here it is in an accessible format. This is the version of this for teens so it is some of the same points from the original book but also some other questions that are pertinent only if you are a young person. Chapters like implicit bias appear in both books but the language in this book is much much easier to understand and the points don't have quite as much information behind them. It's a really good jumping off point for like a younger person in your life and I'm really excited to see how Emmanuel Acho has adapted into this format. And after I've read this version I will be passing it on to a younger reader in my life. Next up also from my wish list but also with no notes so again if this one was you please let me know. We have The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This one is giving me solid Gossip Girl vibes and I love Gossip Girl. I mean, I know there's a lot wrong with it. It's a very screwed up show when viewed with a modern lens, but I love it anyway. And there appears to be a lot of game playing in this one. So it says, she came from nothing. Avery has a plan. Keep her head down, work hard for a better future. Then an eccentric billionaire dies, leaving her almost his entire fortune. And no one, least of all Avery, knows why. I mean, I might not also be investigating that fact. I might just be taking the fortune if I was in her position, but nevertheless. Now she must move into the mansion she's inherited. It's filled with secrets and codes and the old man's surviving relatives, a family hellbent on discovering why Avery got their money. Now there's only one rule winner takes all. Soon she's caught in a deadly game that everyone in the strange family is playing but just how far will they go to keep their fortune? I kind of thought this one was just going to be a thrillery style romp but then I read the first two pages and they were absolutely heartbreaking. Like completely heartbreaking. They took my breath away and now I don't know what to expect but I'm here for it. So that is everything. I really don't think that is an appropriate outro this time. <laughs> that was a lot. I will own that was a lot. But remember, we're all about the book joy today, not the book shame. So we're not counting, we're just reveling. We're enjoying the book happiness and the sprayed edges and the new fantasies that I know very little about. As always, 
If you guys have read any of the books that I have shown today, please let me know what you thought about them, good or bad, we like opinions here. If you're going to be picking up any of these books because you saw them here and you were excited for them, please let me know about that too, so that I know that I have spread the bookish joy. The punishment video for the broken book buying ban will be coming to screens near you soon. If you've enjoyed this video and have liked seeing all the pretty books, please give me a thumbs up so that other people can also see the pretty books. And if you're new here and the pretty books and my face have been pleasant enough, please consider subscribing below and I will speak to you all soon guys bye TCC you think that I'm gonna be all like oh, I don't have any way to put anything and I have to put all the books away but I preempted this because above the new bone season shelf that shelf is just my TBR and I'm gonna take it all off and I'm gonna put half of these books there so I pre-planned this bitches I mean tidying is still you know completely crap but at least half of the problem is solved mm -hmm.